Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk in the battle to be the baddest man on the planet. So in this fight, we're going to be breaking down my first initial thoughts. Uh, we got a lot of clips to go over, so this may be kind of a long film study. But we're going to be taking a look at, at some of the things that went on in the Joshua fight and then some things that went on in the Wallen fight that were really interesting to me. And most importantly, I remember a lot of people thinking that the Wallen fight was not a good fight for Tyson Fury. Um, and we're going to kind of talk about that because I remember seeing or recently discovering that that was kind of an ass whooping. So anyway, we're going to be talking about uh, Usyk first, and we're going to be talking about his main sources of offense in this fight, uh, and a few things that were kind of missing. Now notice, he's going to be going jab, jab, uh, and then left hand, kind of working behind his left hand, and then notice in this clip in particular, he kind of throws an extra shot after getting control of Joshua with these first initial shots, okay? Now, very similar here, control, control, and attack, and then now he's going to add another shot to it. And now this one is kind of unique here, okay? Because he's throwing the right, uh, the left hand, and then he's throwing the right hook with kind of a pendulum cross forward, right? And we're gonna watch it one more time, boom, boom. And now from this position, he's gonna kind of leap forward, and he's gonna get into a position where he lands. He kind of has lead foot dominance, um, but I want you to pay attention to the fact that he doesn't do anything with it. Uh, in theory, he has the the positional advantage against his opponent. And the fact that he doesn't use it to do anything um, is very, very, very significant, especially once we get to him fighting Tyson Fury. But I just want you guys to think about that for now. But again, this clip here coming behind the 1-1-2, one, one, boom, 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 and then going 2 to the body, and then 3 to the body. Uh, very basic stuff in the fight, okay? And now, here he is using very similar patterns, right? Now notice, he's going to get to the front foot, and he doesn't fight from here. Okay, but he, he did make it to this position quite a few times. Now, just a the second a clip, or a couple of, just a second ago, when we were looking at the right cross with the leaping pendulum shot, um, one of the things going on there is that's one of the shots that he would be throwing from this position, right? And there were very few times in the fight where he would use this position to control his opponent so he could pendulum step on them to get the lead foot dominance so he could do something other than throw like a body shot or just run one random headshot, but not taking the angle uh, and then throwing a combination, um, but using the double jab only to cross the line, get to the back foot, and then let go of a big shot and then leave once he's established the lead foot dominance, okay? Now, one of the things that he looks to do <clears throat> When he makes it to this front foot position, he's trying to get his weight across the line here. And then as he comes back, he's trying to jump into this kind of jab here. But he wants to make a rhythm. So the reason that he's making it to the front foot is so that he can jump into this jab. Now, this is what he's using his pendulum for. And now when he makes it here into this position, because he's stepping on the inside of the line sometimes, sometimes on the outside, I think this one is on the outside, um, he's making a full-blown attack. So he has to defend his position or exit the line after, uh, and it kind of just changes the dynamic of what he's going to be able to get done with his his pendulum step or not. Now think like Lomachenko, who um, kind of in the, an the antithesis of this, uh, spent too much time against Teofimo Lopez looking for the lead foot dominance and the pendulum around with the dominant angle, um, whereas I think Usyk is kind of not utilizing it. Okay, and we're going to take a look at a few more clips to see what, I talk, what I'm talking about. Now, look at him as he gets to this front foot position. This is a very similar position to the one that he was just in where he jumped in with the jab, right? And he's going to use this position to attack with the right or the left hand, okay, the rear hand. And now notice, he doesn't stay on the front foot. He immediately leaves that position, right? And now what is he going to do? He gets into a very similar position to what he was doing, right, toward the front foot. And we think, oh, well, it could have been the rear hand right? Or it could be the lead hand, right? So he's kind of got a little bit of varied offense. You don't know which one's going to be coming all the time. Um, but one of the, the big ideas here is that sometimes he will attack into this position with this punch, but he doesn't usually attack out of this position, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, real quick, this doesn't really account because these are towards the end of the fight, toward the middle of the fight, after the, after the 
uh, the pace and the tempo has been set, and you know people are figuring out what the patterns are. And this is just him. He's already gotten control of Joshua, and now he's just adding to those patterns, right, once he's here, but not using those types of punches and stuff to really set stuff up. Okay. Now, I don't think we're there yet. There we go. Here we go. So here he is. Now, again, he doesn't usually fight out of this position. Notice, we didn't see this punch very often. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that this is Usyk moving away. Notice he pendulums, slips to the front foot. Now he's going to be slipping away to get away from the snap of that shot and kind of moving into the line with his kind of hook, like cross, like, you know, when you ha your opponent has this much range on you, you're just kind of just throwing it however you throw it. It winds up being a combination of both of them, but... Very few um, times did he make an actual attack from this position, right? Again, uh, one of the big problems with this fight, mostly just using this position for safety, right? But he would he would move into this position um, uh, with an attack and then immediately leave, but not usually being in this position and leaving and making an attack. Now, again, it kind of correlates to the idea of him getting to the front foot and being on the front foot, and then penduluming forward, right? Because notice, he's moving backwards with this because it's a punch, and if you pendulum forward, it's not always going to be an attack, right? So one of the very few times when he's going to be making a move like that or making an attack is when his opponent is kind of following him. Now, one of the other main sources of Usyk's offense in that fight was the pull counter, right? Notice he's going to control. He sees Joshua faint him. And he's pulling down, shooting the shot. And again, this clip, again, further demonstrates my point. Because notice he's in this dominant position. He has all the positional advantages. If Joshua moves into him and he moves away, he's going to have the power advantage. He's going to have the, the better angle because he's going to be approaching from a, a worse angle. He has lead foot dominance. Um, and Joshua's going to be moving into danger. And Usyk will be moving out of danger. Everything about this position is, is good for Usyk. And his opponent doesn't even have his hands up. But instead of taking advantage of it, boom, boom, he leaves immediately. Again, no real interest, right, in or investment in the idea of landing shots uh, or taking advantage of lead for dominance, even though he spends so much of the fight looking to get it. Now, One of the other problems, okay, now, this is a little bit early in the fight, jab, jab timing, and then left hand to the body. He's getting, uh, Joshua's kind of following him or taking a step off the line, and again, one of the problems that Usyk had is he doesn't fight out of that front foot position, right? Once he makes it there, boom, 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 it's not like the fight is over, but he's not trying to get a better angle. He's not trying to fight out of this position, even though this is a very common position, right? It's very easy to attack him here. And granted, I don't want to say easy because it's not like Joshua knocked him out with this shot or, you know, A, B, C, or D. But this was a source of offense that not only did I predict was going to be valuable for Joshua uh, pre-fight, but it was valuable during the fight. Um, and again, Usyk still showing um, uh, an inability to understand that position and how to take advantage of it, right? Again, in the same vein as the a uh, pendulum step, right? Not using it to get lead for dominance to set up combinations when he can trap one of his opponent's arms, right? He could trap uh, Joshua's left arm completely on his body and just haymaker him to death. Uh, but not using his his uh, lead for dominance to do anything. Now, Usyk likes to get in a rhythm, right? He likes to come forward. And one of the problems with Usyk's lead hand and his control, because he's doing a good job here, right? He's doing the correct thing. And he has control of the line. But one of the problems with Usyk's jab and his probing is that they're a lot less like probes. Um, and if you disrupt his rhythm a little bit, he won't sit down on his 1-1-2, one, one, right? Because it's much less of a probe than it is a very perfunctory sequence for him. Um... And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that is 
uh, later, but a lot of the scenes here where he's coming forward and he's trying to set up his 1 1 2, right? And then he's getting here, 1, and then he's about to do 1 again, and he gets kind of caught in his sequence. Um, it kind of shows that Usyk is not really probing with his jab. He's not ready to change positions if you make a, a, a positional change across his line or you, you interact with him during his probe. Right? He already knew what he was going to do before he even started the engagement, and now he's going to, he's three beats in, and he's like, one, one, two. Okay, I'm in. You know, and it's not exactly like that. But not being able to control the line or make an attack on the line while you control it is a huge problem that, uh, that Usyk has, but it's also a problem that Joshua had, right? Because Usyk would have the, the same ability to just cross his line. Now, the reason that this is important is because this is, uh, now again, coming to the line here and get interrupted immediately instead of interacting with Joshua, encountering him, right? Just tying up and getting con controlled while he has control of the line. But the reason that this is a problem is because here we have uh, Tyson Fury on the ropes with Wallen, and Wallen's coming forward and he's controlling him. And as soon as Wallin makes a, a break for his line, brings his head forward, Tyson Fury is smashing him. Tyson Fury has a uh, pretty fantastic ability to read the line. Um, I think that, especially against a southpaw when I was re-watching this fight, I think that he did a fantastic job. And this clip really, really stuck out to me. Um, there were a lot of times where he would throw his probe and he would time the guy, uh, but he would miss the shot. Like the guy was head would come off, off the line, the center line, just like a little bit, but his timing was just nearly perfect. He just couldn't get his head. Um, but Tyson Fury can use his rhythm and his pace and his, his probing, uh, to actually make attacks as his opponent breaks the rule of his control. Right? He's trying to be sneaky, cross the line, and getting walked right into a punch. Really, really great shot. Now, we're going to take a little bit of a look at this first clip here before we go back through the list here. We got all these clips here. But I want you to pay attention to Wallen. He's going to be taking his head. He's going to be trying to slip toward the front foot. And as he tries to slip toward the front foot, Tyson Fury is going to probe him with the lead hand here. Right, As he tries to make it front foot, there you go. And now he's going to try to bring his head a little closer, fainting him. He tries to slip. And as soon as his head starts making it across the line, Tyson Fury gives him a little little probing shot, right? Boom, immediately. And now we're just going to watch it a little bit real time. But just look at how quick and how sharp Tyson Fury is on that. You see his weight come forward, and he's just immediately attacking that zone. Coming forward, coming forward. And any time his head makes it toward that front foot, boom, jab coming, snapping at him. Why is this important? Well, that means that Usyk's not going to be making it to that front foot position as often as he wants. Okay? That's important because that's the front foot position, as we established, when he slips to the front foot, he's really just looking for space so he can start double jabbing crossing the line, pushing you toward your back foot while he goes from his front foot to his back foot and then crossing the line while you make it to the back foot uh, with a big left hand, okay? If he's having trouble making it to the front foot in the first place, he's not going to be able to get his double jab off to set those shots up, but we're also going to talk about why that double jab is going to be bullshit anyway, okay? Now, while I'm coming forward again, coming forward, and again, Tyson Fury giving him all kinds of feints, keeping him off the front foot, off the front foot. Now, here's the pull counter right here. One of the ways that uh, Usyk likes to get on the line as well. He's going to use a very similar type of motion. We'll just watch him get pushed off his line, right? Here he gets pushed off. Boop. And now he's going to re-enter. And... He's still getting a little bit controlled, and we're going to talk a little bit about this lead hand control here. This is Tyson Fury's like most 
used defense. He's trying to push Wallen's head off of him and control him. Um, and that makes it hard. If Wallen was to go from this position and try to throw a right cross, right, that or a right hook, the one that uh, Usyk was starting to follow up his combinations after throwing the left hand to the body, uh, if he tries to cross, he has to move his head. And if Tyson Fury gets control of his head, uh, it's going to push him around and either make him fall off balance or it's going to completely stifle his punch. Okay, so there's not going to be a lot of opportunity here if his head is being controlled. Uh, no, nothing necessarily illegal about it, right? It's not going to be forever. It's not like he's holding, and he can still be punched while he's being while he's holding here. So you know, whatever, whatever. But it's something that he needs to be uh, prepared for. But going to the body is going to be one of those things that's very effective for Usyk uh, in the beginning of the fight because. Hitting Tyson Fury in the head is going to be very, very, very difficult. Uh, now, we're going to start taking a look at some other clips here. This is in the third round. Here's he is shooting the jab, and Wallen's going to make it to the back foot. And he's going to come forward to the double jab. Boop. Very similar motion. And here he is getting stuffed by that shot. Okay? Tyson Fury is completely controlling him, pushing him off the line. Here he is coming into the line with the pull counter like motion, off the double jab like motion, and just getting stuffed with this shot. Okay, uh, this is actually a shot that Tyson Fury is very good at. Okay, oh, we don't want to watch this one again. We just watched that one. Here he is coming forward off the double jab again, right? Double jab, and getting stuffed again, catching Walling with the left hand, pushing him here timing him just ever so perfectly okay and again Tyson Fury is showing that he has control of these beats and he's going to be able to be in position when that last beat comes to counter uh, and we're going to see a few more really good examples uh, now this one I thought was a good example again Tyson Fury getting really good control and trying to push him away um, kind of being a little bit open I'll say to the head right but again it's very difficult to land a headshot against someone who's controlling your chest. Tyson Fury gets away with it because he's so much bigger than his opponents. Even though if you're, if you're fighting someone that's, who's the same size as you and you try this, you're going to get knocked out every single time. <laughs> every single time you're going to get knocked out, okay? No question, all right? You're going to get, like, you're going to get slapped, right, with a, with a big fist right across your head because the guy's not going to be able to throw a round punch, but he's going to be winging it, and you're going to get hit, and you're going to go down every single time. But when you have other advantages against your opponent, you get away with dumb shit like this, okay? Now, he's going to get away with it for not, for not forever. You know, maybe Usyk will be able to find an opportunity to counter him in some scenarios like this, right? Now, this is one of the ones that happened in the first round. And all of those other engagements, okay, were a result of this one, okay? So this is what happened early in the fight to show Tyson Fury, oh, here's his strategy, right? Coming in off the jab here, getting a lead foot dominance, going with this shot. But as the fight went on, Tyson Fury got better and better and better at creating space, right? Not allowing him to get close enough to really land that shot, keeping up with him. Now, the pull counters, right? What happens if your opponent is pull countering you a lot? Again, one of Usyk's biggest sources of offense because he likes to come in from the back foot is going to be the pull counter, right? That's why the double jab works so well for him because you can come off the back foot. But he's going to try to use a similar motion where he's going to try to pull and come back with that, that right hand there. And Tyson Fury is so quick, he just re-engages the line immediately and hits him with a second punch. Beautiful. Now, notice Tyson Fury, after he throws this combination, he's not in great position, right? He immediately starts reaching for his opponent's head and starts trying to push him, right? This is going to be very, very, very important for the rest of the film study, okay? But here he is coming forward behind that double jab again, right? Same kind of timing, boom, and getting smashed, right? Making it into position, crossing the line, eating a big shot, making it coming forward, eating a big shot. And now again, Tyson Fury is not always in position. Sometimes 
after Tyson Fury throws a good combination or a series of punches. Uh, remember Dillian White throwing, getting hit with the uppercut and then Tyson Fury immediately controlling him after hitting him with the hand of God. And then shoves him, right? Because he immediately looks to control him, right? Very similar to here. Not here. <laughs> here, after landing the shot here, immediately trying to control him. But when he doesn't do that, right, his defense is very, it's very poor. He's always winds up in this position here. Um, and this is a really interesting idea because Tyson Fury looks to be really solid on the outside, have really great timing, right? Excellent work on the outside with the double jab here. Timing this guy, controlling him with the left hand as he takes a step back to control him and attack him with the right hand. Perfect timing. Staying on that side of the line. Timing him with the left hand as he recrosses the line. Beautiful stuff. And then he gets stuck here. If he's not trying to tie you up and he's not trying to put you in a headlock, which he does a lot of, his defense sucks. He's very vulnerable. He doesn't get people who, are, who can teach him the rules of inside fighting. Uh, because well, number one, he doesn't. <laughs> he, there's nobody as big as him, <laughs> uh, let alone that's gonna have hand speed like his to fight on the inside and make it fun and interesting and challenge him, right? There's just no competition. There's no one to learn it with. But uh, this is a big problem for Tyson Fury. The only thing is, Usyk is not one of those guys who's trying to get there uh, so he can get close up to you and donkey punch you, right? Uh, when he gets his position and he gets his punch off, he tries to leave the line. He uses his lead foot dominance to escape, not to set up further engagements. And uh, if he's going to be doing that instead of looking to set up bigger attacks, Tyson Fury's not really going to have a lot to worry about. Um, Usyk showed in the, in the Joshua fight that uh, he doesn't really probe very much with his rear hand. And when he does probe, it's because he wants to land and score, not because he wants to set something up. Again, he can't use his control of the line to force you to cross the line and make you pay for it. Right? His control of the line is all very deliberate. Now, pull counters, right? Say you get pull counters. Someone shoots your jab, and now you're going to come down, and then now you're going to come in, right? And try to catch him, but... Tyson Fury so fast, right? So he pushes you off your line, and he's now he's attacking you. And again, Tyson Fury is so fast. He's so skilled. Excellent control of the line there. Now, fainting. Fainting. Now, this is going to be very important, too. Okay? His opponent shows that he's kind of trying to use a pull counter type motion, right? Attack him on the second beat. So now he's going to faint in here. Oh, are you coming in? Coming in, faints him, and then goes to the body, and then leaves the line. Beautiful, super fast, taking what he can get, all right? Very, very difficult to fight someone who's just going to take anything that they can get. Oh, a little tiny body shot right here, take it, right? As a competitor, you know what that means. You hope the judges think it means nothing. The crowd doesn't care. Your fans don't care. Tyson Fury's fans are like, oh, that was the easiest shot ever. Didn't even try to counter, didn't do nothing, didn't even see it probably. He probably still feeling it. Anyway, as a competitor, right? You know that you're falling behind those free punches. Even someone as tall as Tyson Fury is still trying to steal body shots. Next, next, moving on. Faint, 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 stepping in with the jab off the line, pendulums off. And as soon as he lands, he's ready to throw his rear hand. Just beautiful timing, beautiful rhythm. Boom. Pendulum's off the line. Lands. Immediately striking because he knows he's going to be using that same kind of pull counter-like timing to re-enter his line. Right? Follow him back. Now, again, this is really interesting because the dichotomy in, in technique and stuff from Tyson Fury in he shows in sequences like this where he's just ready. He's on the line. He knows what you're about to do. And he's ready to react. And then the times when he's not. Uh, and he's completely exposed. And we're going to see a couple of those. 
again, he understands the pull counter is coming. And you might say this is a really strange way to bait the pull counter out. Like, wouldn't you rather, right? Because he's going to double feint this way, draw it out, and now he's going to take a step off and throw the right hand. Now, that's really weird, right? Because you'd normally just say, okay, so why isn't he just throwing the left hand? He knows the guy's going to pull counter, right? And that brings us to another one of those really interesting wrinkles, right? So, Alexander Usyk can't take lead foot dominance and make anything out of it. He uses it only to escape the line. So he's not going to be able to take advantage of Tyson Fury's biggest flaw is that he sucks at actually fighting on the inside unless he's wrestling and putting you in a headlock. But Tyson Fury can't actually cross the line to the front foot and probe. He only probes from the back foot. He can stab you and hit you with the right hand like a laser beam. But his ability to get to the front foot and probe and start setting stuff up, set up pull counters from the front foot, is severely lacking. And that's why, instead of probing with the right hand, he has to do these funny jumping forwards, these little interesting motions. That's why in this motion, he's giving him the bolo right hand, right? He's trying to feint him. He's doing everything he can to get him out of position so he can get him to jump and pull counter. And now again... Even though Tyson Fury looks funny with the bolo stuff and his feints are garbage, I want you to pay attention to the fact that it still works and he's timing him with the left hand here, smack, and then driving him right into the right hand, smack. Again, completely annihilating the, the ability of the pull counter to be effective against him. Uh, just beautiful boxing, beautiful understanding of the line, of where his opponent is, what he's trying to do. And again, actually responding to his own feints. His feint triggered a move in his opponent, which triggered a move in him. Bink, bink. And again, that's something that Usyk, in spite of the fact that everything in his camp and everything about his style all suggests that he's... You know, he can do it all. He is the best fighter on the planet, fainting and probing. We associate those kind of sharp movements and slipping with the ability to read positions. And one thing, again, I didn't like in the Joshua fight. It didn't look like he was actually doing that stuff. It looked like he was just kind of hanging out. You know, like he was Joshua's sparring partner. They were just moving around, fucking off. Part of my language, but... Now, sometimes, for some reason, Tyson Fury is just easy to hit. And you never know when that's going to be. It's really interesting that you never know exactly when it's going to be that he's going to be setting a trap for you or not. Or he's just going to walk into some dumb shit all on his own. You know? And a lot of the interesting stuff that was... One of the interesting narratives, again, probing in the Joshua fight. So we go and take a look, see if we can find a good clip for it. There was a lot of, you know, we'll call it stalking. There was a lot of good stalking, right? Where one guy was like following another guy around and, and neither guy was doing anything because one was like, oh, are you chasing me? Am I being chased? Am I chasing you? Right? And it's kind of... You might call that... Someone might call that touch butt. <laughs> and uh, again, with Usyk not pendulum stepping forward when he makes it to the front foot. In moments like this, not fainting, not not leaping forward with the, with the right cross, pushing Joshua to the back foot taking a pendulum step and then making it donkey punching him when he lands. But not getting any value out of this position. Um, it just means that the pace of his fight winds up being not only very predictable, but very controllable. And even though he's fast and he's athletic, he's still going to struggle, I think, to cross the line against Tyson Fury uh, because of that and to find his offense. Um, yeah, preliminarily, uh, I give all of the 
open stance advantages to Tyson Fury. Um, and all this to say, if the, if, even if Tyson Fury is lo like losing, he can still just switch south by himself. You know, there's just so many advantages. Now, a few of Alexander Usyk's advantages. Well, number one, we know that he's the better conditioned fighter. Wait, hmm, I don't know if we actually know that. We think we know that. He's the better trained fighter. That's definitely for sure. He's definitely the better athlete. That's definitely for sure. Um, we don't know if he has the better punching power. Uh, pound for pound, he does have the better punching power. But he has a lot of pounds to catch up to Tyson Fury. So, who's going to win? Well, with... Usyk so afraid to make it to the front foot and get close to his opponent that because he thinks he's going to eat uh, body shots from hell and uh, he's going to get knocked out. He won't stay close enough to really take advantage of fighting against fighting on the inside against uh, Tyson Fury. Um, he's got good pull counters. He's got he's fast. That's one of his best sources of offense. Tyson Fury showing that he can disrupt the pool counter with the jab. He can disrupt the pool counter with the right hand. Um, and he's got great fainting, great control of the line. Uh, and he, he knows what to do with it. Now, Usyk can interact with the line much quicker than Wallen can. Um, he can also make Tyson Fury pay much better than Wallen can. Um, but it's it's interesting because one of the only opportunities that, that Usyk has to really pressure Tyson Fury, because again, he needs to make it to the front foot so he can start double jabbing to throw his left hand. But Tyson Fury is going to control the front foot. He's got good timing. He's going to throw his jab there. It's a quick, sharp, easy, effortless jab. Tap. Gotcha. You didn't like that. Don't, don't go into my position. I'm not sure that Usyk will be able to move into that position t enough to tire Tyson Fury out. And that's going to be a big part of the uh, big part of the fight is Usyk being able to make it to the front foot to kind of close the distance against Tyson Fury because Tyson Fury is so big and so fast. And uh Tyson Fury has always allotted a certain amount of wrestling, right? And I don't know if you guys have ever wrestled. Um, I was a little guy when I was younger, so anyone who wrestled with me was always bigger than me. So when you only get so many like great spurts of energy <laughs> when you're wrestling people who are bigger than you. Um, and like sometimes if you time it right and you do it well, you can get the best out of it, and people will be like, oh, wow. And if you do it once or twice, um, you know, people think you can do it every time, even if you're tired. It's really hard to wrestle someone who weighs 260 pounds or whatever Tyson Fury weighs, 270. And Usyk coming in, I don't know what he came in in this fight. I'm not sure that he's going to be able to sustain a wrestling pace. With uh, with Tyson Fury. Now, he's a wrestler himself. Maybe he can. Maybe he can scare Tyson Fury uh, into not wrestling with him if he can beat him to a position or actually hurt him with the punch on the inside. But um, getting to the inside is going to be a very important idea for, for Usyk, I think. Um, which is interesting because... Uh, it was a really great uppercut that stopped Dillian White. Um, and those could still wind up being very effective punches for Tyson Fury as well. Uh, one of those punches I didn't actually highlight in this film study. Um, he does control the front space. And if you come in behind the double jab, he will catch you with an uppercut too. It's not just the straight right hand. Um, so his rounded punches can be pretty short too. Even though his hooks are kind of slappy with the, with the wrist and the palm. Um... Usyk's corner should definitely say something to the ref about that, the slapping with the palms and the wrists that Tyson Fury does. 
Um, also, the holding, the head, the putting him in a headlock. Tyson Fury has a habit of getting into that position. So, if Tyson Fury is allowed to wrestle and he's allowed to put him in a headlock, there's I don't think there's any way that Usyk can tire uh, Tyson Fury out. Uh, Tyson Fury absolutely mauled Deontay Wilder, and it was even worse in the third fight. It was just so bad, and it was so easy. Um, and Tyson, Deontay Wilder was sharp for the first few rounds. Pretty sharp. Pretty effective. But he just got so worn down so quickly from a little bit of wrestling. And uh, it's interesting because they... I think they tried to say that Joshua tried to use his size and this and that, and it felt like Joshua tried the opposite of using his size in this fight. You know, which is really interesting because he didn't try to put himself on Usyk very much. You know, smother him and push him around and, you know, throw him off balance just a little bit, just enough to make him work, you know? He was trying to hit him, hit him on the inside, and again... It made Uzik not want to stay, not to be close. So, if Tyson Fury is allowed to hold, if Tyson Fury is allowed to wrestle and put Usyk in a headlock, even like three times per round, I think that'll be enough to secure him the uh, a round victory. Getting to put Usyk in a headlock three times per round, I think that'll be enough to win him every round. Um... If he's not allowed to hold, and he's not, he may be able to tire Fury out in the later rounds um, and really use his hand speed and his combinations. Um, or, if he's clever and he uses his pendulum steps well, uh, maybe he can get an angle and hurt him early. Uh, but if Tyson Fury is allowed to hold and wrestle even a little bit, um, I think that Tyson Fury is going to win pretty easily. Now, this is a, a very similar thing. Um, one prediction that I had, one of my first predictions was Kell Brook versus Errol Spence. And one of the big uh, factors was Kell Brook being able to win was holding and controlling Errol Spence after he throws a combination or after he throws a punch. Um, Errol Spence not being a counter puncher means that if he ties up after throwing a punch, he has unlimited free offense until Errol Spence starts countering, right? But if he can't, if he gets tied up immediately on the next beat after a punch, then there's no space for a shot. Then there's no counters. Then there's no offense. And uh, we could have something kind of similar. Um, Similar, uh, if Tyson Fury is allowed to hold, uh, he won't even need to do it very much because he'll be able to create so much space with his jab and his footwork. And again, Usyk is not a high-volume fighter either. Um, it's not like he's putting on unlimited pressure, right? Uh, Anthony Joshua was able to just kind of move his head around a little bit um, and create a, a decent amount enough space. Right. Um, again, not very high volume, not super high pressure, um, and getting to um, to nullify one hundred percent of Usyk's offense simply by throwing a right hand and then tying him up um, three times per round will stifle probably like eighty percent of Usyk's overall offense. So, anyway. Um, Preliminarily, I think that I'm going to favor uh, Tyson Fury. Um, I Again, I didn't think that Usyk fought a great fight against Joshua. Um, I think he was too afraid of the body shots. And again, I don't know how many times he had bruised ribs in his camp. I don't know if he has any bruised or broken ones going into the fight. Um, but it looked like he was very, very worried about the body shots. And if he fights in a manner in which he's worried about the body shots and he's worried about getting close and he's not able to take advantage of his superior footwork, his superior speed, right? Because getting a positional advantage against your opponent is a big deal. 
And if the only thing that he can muster off of a, such a huge advantage is walking off the line for no reason, um, he's going to spend so much time in the fight at a disadvantage, I don't think he could possibly outpoint Tyson Fury. So, anyway, um, those are my thoughts on the fight at the moment. We'll probably do some more film study, and I'll share some more stuff. But if you guys are interested, there's a full fight film study of Joshua versus uh, Usyk on Patreon, as well as Tyson Fury versus Wallin on Patreon as well. It's ten bucks a sign up, ten bucks a month. And if you guys are looking for uh, personal film study, private coaching, uh, one on one attention. Um, Check out my private coaching on Patreon. It's 50 bucks to sign up, 50 bucks a month. Uh, number one, it comes with a free double in bag video series uh, where I teach you guys how to move around the pendulum, uh, move around the double in bag and the cobra bag in pendulum. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent series. It's easy to learn. Um, and it comes for free. Uh, and you just send in videos. You can start with those. You can start with heavy bag. You can start with sparring. Um, and. Uh, I'll do my best to make you the fighter you want to be, okay? Um, and I have guys that send in video every day. I have guys that send in video once a week. I have guys that uh, send in videos maybe twice a month only. Um, it's all up to you and how much you want to work and how much you want to get done and you know how well you think you're progressing. I always encourage everyone to send stuff in every day, uh, twice a week, three times a week, uh, because this is all that I do. <laughs> I understand that that's not all that everyone does, uh, so you're not going to send stuff in that much. But if you can, if you do, if you're looking to be uh, make a lot out of this and you have the time, I have the time to coach you. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Blah, 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 blah.